Hey Phantomaniacs, welcome to the newest Needless Unboxing brought to you by Audible Interlude, a G.I. Joe podcast available wherever you get your podcasts. Today, we are taking a look at the final piece of Special Missions Cobra Island, the extremely frustrating Target exclusive line that's driving everybody nuts right now. I was fortunate enough to jump into target.com and I got a notification from the app letting me know that it was in stock and after about six or seven tries I was finally able to place an order for this beachhead figure. Uh, you'll notice that this one has blue eyes I was able to place another order because my son is collecting these and he still needs a beachhead. So I was able to place another order a couple of days later. And, and let me just point out that I ordered this on a Wednesday and it arrived on Friday. Uh, and then on a Saturday, I was able to place an order for another one. We're waiting on that one. I'm hopeful we might get one with brown eyes. We'll see. Uh, there There is a running change on this figure. So, and then my pal... Uh, Schweck, who is the head of research for the Needless Things podcast, was able to grab one as well, and he is sending that along. That one is going to go to Phantom Jr., and then I'll have the extras for our friend at the Nerdy Laser Podcast. Check them out. Uh, you can see on the side of the packaging here, we've got some specialties designated, as with every figure in this line. This is figure number 10. Uh, Beachhead's specialties are electricity, bullets, Skulls and anvils. So I guess he drops anvils uh, on his enemies, Wiley Coyote style. I'm kidding, of course. You can go to GIJo.com and see what all of that means. Uh, in place of file cards, you can go to their website and actually interact with the information a little bit more. I actually like that. Uh, great art on the side here. Uh, I really dig this. This is wacky. Is this what that gun is? Interesting. I hadn't even noticed that. Uh, although I do notice the gun in the art has a lot more deco than the gun in the box, but we'll take a look at that in a minute. Uh, on the back here, we have, once again, a map of Cobra Island featuring some different portions of Cobra Island, and I, I think this art is absolutely fantastic, and I want a poster of this uh, pretty badly. Uh, there you go, gijoe.com is where you can find out the information uh, about all the individual characters, but... For now, that's enough for the packaging, which I like. I've said it before. Please go back and review uh, my other G.I. Joe reviews here on the Needless Things YouTube channel. Uh, and I, I do want to point out real quick, Wayne Beachhead Sneeden. Okay, so the original Beachhead figure that came out in 80... Oh gosh, was he in 86, I think? Um, I believe he was in 86. I only recently realized that his name is Beach Head and not Beach Head, like all one word. Uh, now, it has from time to time been all one word in the line, but originally it was Beach Head. And of course, Wayne Sneeden is his real name, and they had to put it on the packaging for copyright reasons. So there you go. But now, enough about the packaging. Let's pull out our trusty 1964 box cutter. Slice through that tape and see what's going on with Beachhead. Stupid piece of paper. I'm sure that piece of paper is very important for some legal reasons that I don't care about or understand. Uh, all right. We have a backpack, a beret, a crossbow, wacky gun, Slightly less wacky pistol. Not at all wacky knife. And definitely not wacky beach head. Uh, again, we'll point out, this is old blue-eyed beach head. Look at the sculpt on that face. Look how beach heady he looks. Now, let's get our accessories out of the way here so the camera will actually focus on the figure. Uh... Look at that arched right eyebrow. That's fantastic. I tell you guys, seeing pictures of this figure online don't do it justice because the detail, I mean, look at the color variation here 
on the mask, on the sweater, uh, all of these different deco apps or deco hits, the knuckles on the gloves, and even on the vest, which could have very easily been left black. We've got these brown panels here uh, and in the front. And here, this apparently signature blue that runs across the Joe team. They all share uh, whatever this ends up being uh, is common to them. Now, the original Beachhead had a strap right here with a, you guessed it, red beret secured underneath. We'll take a look at that again in a minute. But uh, otherwise, as far as the sculpt and, and the look go, this is good. The only thing I would complain about, really, and, and look, don't get me wrong, this figure looks fantastic and is very clearly beachhead in a way that other beachhead figures have, have maybe not been as beachheady. I wish he had the camo on the pants. I really, really do. To me, uh, I always loved Joe figures that had any kind of camo pattern on them. And this is, it's definitely, like, he still looks great, but I wish he had the camo on there. Uh, but otherwise, I mean, look at, you can see these pieces right here, separately tooled pieces that can be, you know, taken off if you want, moved around, whatever. Uh, he's got his nice holster here that actually, again, has some deco on it. Uh, it's funny, the figure is blowing me away with paint apps, and we've got these nice butterfly shoulders here that don't have a ton of range, but are still going to be helpful for a lot of uh, dual handled weapons. Boy, I awkwardly made my way through that. Whatever I was trying to say there, you know what I'm saying. You can get a little better grip with that extra range that a lot of six-inch figures don't have. Um, tons and tons of, of, you can see the detail, uh, all of the textures that we've got running through uh, his BDUs. And then we've got the armor is much more subtle than it has been on some of the other Joes and actually has, you know, we've got lots of different colors going on here the plating this business on the front whatever the heck that is and then over here on this side we actually have a sheath for that knife that is again a separate piece so that hasbro has options let me try and get these straps looking a little bit better here they're a little jammed up uh this leaves hasbro with a lot of options for these parts because, you know, we take this sheath off, we take these off and replace them with something else or don't and have entirely different pieces. Maybe this lower half, oh, and there's our drop down uh, hip right there. Uh, you know, maybe we take this business off and this will be a green shirt Joe at some point. I don't know. There's, there's like I said, a lot of options with these separately tooled pieces that, that can be changed out. Very, very cool. I think he looks great. He looks like Beachhead. They've done a very good job here. Uh, double jointed knees with ratcheting joints. Nice, deep ankle movement. They turn. Just the, these are excellently executed figures. There's no way around it. Uh, can't really do a whole lot with the ab crunch there, but we do have the nice. You can't see it, but it's not a cut joint at the waist. It's a uh, sort of ball joint situation. Uh, really just incredible. The best mass market 12th scale figures that we're seeing right now. That That is my opinion of this Joe line. So let's take a look at Beachhead's accessories. Uh, first, we have that beret. It has a little deco on the front there, the black around here. So it's actually black painted red, which I think gives it a better look. Uh, a little miss right here. Got a little bit of slop going on but uh, not a huge deal doesn't bother me too much and initially I did not care for the look like the first pictures we saw online of the balaclava and the beret didn't work for me but I've got to say seeing it in person it looks cool I don't know that I'll display him this way because I mean that's beachhead but now with this versus this like, that kind of looks a little plain in a weird way. But I, I still think this is how I'll display him. Uh, we also have 
the traditional beachhead backpack. Uh, all black. Some deco would have been nice, but it looks like some Joe accessories get deco, some do not. Uh, I like it's got the... You know, I was never quite sure what this was. I think it's maybe a grappling hook. Uh, and then we've got some arrows for that crossbow. We've got a flashlight. Uh, all the clasps, all the straps and everything. Just great, great detail. This is, uh, for customizers, this is going to be great because those guys are going to have a lot of fun painting this stuff up and giving it uh, all the painted detail that it deserves. Uh, but for me, that's just not my cup of tea, so I'll be leaving it as is. I do really wish we had some more deco on these. I don't quite understand the disparity between figures uh, because some of them have deco on the weapons and some don't. And I think you need to go one way or the other. But this is a cool looking gun. I really like it. Uh, would I like it more with some blue right there? Whatever's going on? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Give me some more detail. But form wise, I like this weapon. I don't want these Joes to have just straight up regular real world weapons that's not as interesting to me i don't want him to get too wacky roadblocks gun you know pushed it a little far but uh i like this this looks cool uh, and then we've got his crossbow which is you know whatever it, it'll launch the arrows it'll launch the grappling hook i guess but functionally as a toy eh, it's eh it's just kind of there uh cool pistol I like the pistol very much. Uh, I, I like that it's compact and thick. It has a cool look to it. And it's going to store right in that holster on his thigh. Slides right in there. Perfect. And then all of these figures, the hands are a softer plastic, probably a PVC. And it's very, very easy to get a nice, secure grip on all of the weapons that come with these figures. Uh, Hasbro, they really have done a great job engineering these figures to, to interact with their accessories. So as you can see, he can hold that no problem at all. Looks great. It's secure in the grip. And then last but not least, we have uh, his knife. A steel blade would have been really nice, but whatever. It's a cool looking knife. I like it. Looks like it could stab somebody right in the face. No problems at all. And slides into that sheath on the boot. You can see those straps are still a little wacky. I'll, I'll straighten those up a little bit better. But I got to say, this is an excellent beachhead. It is true enough to the original design that it's made me very happy. I wouldn't argue against a variant in colors that reflected the original a little more uh, a little more accurately with a darker green on the sweater and the balaclava the camo on the pants like I, i'd go for that i'd have no problem at all with that and maybe that's a possibility considering that this is a target exclusive and not technically a mainline release but whatever the case this is for me a must-have figure Let's see if we can get that. Oh, yeah, look at that. That's great. Uh, this is a must-have figure. I don't see it ever being... Like, if they do, that peg doesn't really want to stay in there too well. I'm not thrilled with how that's working. Uh, even if they release a beachhead that's more accurate to the original figure... Uh, I don't see myself just getting rid of this one or anyway or anything. This is staying on the shelf. It looks great. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Please like, subscribe, share, and be sure and check out the Audible Interlude podcast available the first Monday of every single month. A new one just came out this past Monday. Yo, Joe!